I really, really like these old electric cars. I think they're so cool. It was Thomas Edison himself that worked with Henry Ford to actually build an electric car back in the day. He was a huge believer in electric vehicles. He saw the power potential of just massive amounts of power on the electrical grid for just innovating everything. We were gonna move to a more efficient utopian and he thought that cars would essentially drive that because cars would make sure that batteries would increase, battery technology would increase, and that would drive electrification. So, big fan of Edison and his work on electric cars. So, uh, steering on this, it's an old tiller steering. So, you've got two levers here, one's the accelerator, one's steering. Um, so, push away to go left, pull towards you to go right, and then the accelerator just increases the amount of voltage that goes through to the, to the DC motor. Uh, so just rotating this here through this lever it increases the, uh, the DC voltage. So 72 volts maximum voltage uh, gives you a top speed of about uh, 20, 25 miles an hour. This is a 1913 uh, model year. It was produced in 1912 uh, Detroit Electric. So it's originally electric. Um, it's not a conversion. A lot of people think it's a conversion, but it's uh, originally an electric vehicle. Uh, it's quite a unique one in that it has a fake radiator on the front because that was the fashion of the time. Uh, gasoline cars, Model T was on the road and uh, the uh, that had a radiator, so this is a fake radiator on the front. This was a, around a couple of years after the Model T. And uh, to give you a kind of comparison, you could buy a house for the amount of money it costs to buy this car. To be fair, that was 1915, where you could buy a house for like a month's wage. <laughs> that would be nice. It was, six, it was $600 for a Model T, and it was $3,500 for this car. Whoa! So it's not like an insubstantial amount. So the owner of this car, the owner of this car actually lived in a hotel um, in, in Victoria. Um, and yeah, it wasn't a, it's a, it was a luxury vehicle at the time. Can you imagine how cool it would have been back in the day to be in like the early days of automobile? Like, why did we get away from that? That was cool. We had that back then. Probably battery capacity now that I think about it. I bet the battery capacity sucked. So it's, it is moving fast, so we can. Uh... Okay. It's either go or not, so uh, please move. All right, so behind me we got the Volvo. It's got four batteries. We don't know anything other than that. Here's the four batteries. The Volvo. It's got four batteries. This Volvo was pretty well done like we did Carl in that it has a normal differential, drive line, and motor. The only difference is in Carl we have both differentials as a tandem drive. This one has just a little fake axle and a one drive axle. So this is actually just a single axle truck with a tag axle, which fun fact is illegal in BC because you're not allowed to have tag axles or non-powered axles. Because you don't want them in Canada in the winter time. All the hills you got in the snow, having one axle not spinning and pushing, it just leads to so many spin outs. This is a Max garbage truck. It's pretty cool. It's just a fully electric garbage truck. So for those asking like, how is a hydraulics gonna work if you're electric? Like this. Okay, so looking under this Mack truck, it's got a drive line too, but What's really cool is it's got like an old school Rockwell top loader. That's what Carl used to have before we rebuilt it. I haven't seen like an old top loader since the 1960s. That's sweet. So this garbage truck is fully electric. It's got about the exact same battery pack that we do on Topsy. And they say it can run about five to six hours just off its batteries alone. That's what they're claiming. And that, that, which is really, really good for that size. This one's actually kind of cool way that Freightliner shows it off. It's a totally torn down thing. So you can see where all the high voltage lines run, the batteries, the coolant. I think that's really cool. It's interesting like how they put their batteries between the frame rails. Can I squeeze that way? Yes. Freightliner has taken chassis reduction weight on electric vehicles to the extreme. This is going to be hard to compete with, guys. I'm not going to lie.
Hey, I'm Gordon. I like that you're bringing manufacturing jobs back to BC, and I like what the company is doing for sustainability and you know making the cars repairable as well. I would say I really like the elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Heads up! dinner time. We uh, got a little bit of time before we start moving our trucks around and stuff, so time to eat. I want to say everyone, thank you for coming out and showing us uh, the appreciation and interest in the trucks and the light towers and the uh, staff here is very thankful for everything you've done. Have a great night. Thank you. You guys all. look fried. There's a, there was a busy like there was oh, a oh dude it was an insane three days this what, was an thousand? insane three days this was honestly though one of the greatest weekends of my life like everything we accomplished like meeting two bit da vinci ricky sandy, sandy monroe. monroe saying that he was impressed with our truck like this was one highlight of the show hi highlight of the show for him like this has been we sure, should be yeah. really, really proud of what we did, but we should go the fuck to sleep. Yeah. Go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. Let's Drink go to bed. Santa now. Drink Santa now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that wraps up the fully charged show down here in Vancouver. I want to thank everybody that came to see us. It has been an absolutely incredible weekend. I, I can honestly say this has been one of the best weekends of my life, being able to bring down Carl, show everybody, and then also debut our new L500. Topsy, show it off. The reception has been fantastic. I think the entire team has been proud. First off, I want to thank Eric, my partner in all this, for helping me with this crazy dream. I want to thank everybody on the Edison Motors team who made this happen. I want to thank Fully Charged for inviting us. And I want to thank just everybody that came and showed their support. It means so much. This has been absolutely an incredible weekend. I cannot stress again, this is one of the best weekends of my life. Thank you guys. Thank you for helping us make this dream happen. What are you, Eric? Do you have anything to say? Oh man, what an incredible weekend. We managed to build a truck in less than a year and we got to showcase it to thousands of fans from all across Canada, even the States. And to do a debut at Fully Charged, what an incredible place to do it, right in Canada as a Canadian made truck. All right, that was that. Uh, love you, man. Oh. <laughs> this guy is amazing. <laughs> Wait, no. Now slap it and say that's not going anywhere. That's not going anywhere.
All right, so we were leaving the fully charged show and going back to Kamloops, and it was a fantastic show. Unfortunately, I am leaving on a low note, I guess, in a ways that I have kidney stones um, moving right now, and it is. This morning I woke up in crippling pain, and I am now on morphine pills, and going. John is driving me to Kamloops to go to the hospital, so that sucks. Uh, thankfully, he has a beautiful van. You want to show the van here, Dan? Yeah, there's John and you know, the van. And I get a bed. You got a bed. Yeah. So, update. 